it's crazy how everybody is breathing, but they don't know how they are breathing. <sighs> why do this podcast? Then? Oh, why this podcast? That's an interesting... Why, why are you interviewing me now suddenly? I don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, why? <laughs> Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. And today, I have a very special guest over here in my cozy living room, which I've been so excited to set it all up for this podcast. And um, this friend of mine, he is the breath master of Asia. <laughs> mm, he's not master, but yeah, the breath guy, la, the yeah, breathing guy. La. The breathing guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so I think he can explain to you a little bit more about what breath work is. Mm. Well, basically... It's crazy how everybody is breathing, but they don't know how they are breathing. And just by learning how to breathe consciously, mm -hmm. they can take charge of how they feel to relax, have more energy, and all that good stuff. So that's basically what breathwork is about, like mm -hmm. learning how to breathe consciously. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So, so that's what I have been doing now. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's how we met. Yes. Right? We met through my work. Mm. And um, I had him over for an event where he was conducting a huge session on breath work. And then we conducted an, a huge ice bath session mm. with like 200 plus people, mm -hmm. I think. And I think through, through that trip to... For the work together, we became kind of like friends in that session. Um, but circling back to why I have you here today, right? You know, I don't know if you guys noticed when you listened to Piachai started speaking just now, like immediately after you started speaking, like how you were able to describe breath, right? It just helped me to feel very chill already, <laughs> like very relaxed immediately. And I think that's how you made me feel and how you, ha you teaching about breath work has allowed me to realize how just changing my breath, mm. things has changed for me. Mm. Yeah, and that has benefited me a lot, which is why I want to have you over to just talk about... I don't... We're not talking specifically about breath work, mm. but how going from working as a corporate, right? That mm. was your background. Mm. And then you got into this breath work stuff and you've turned into a very holistic approach when it comes to your business and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite curious to hear... Why that change and how has that change helped you in this life? Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I would say um, initially corporate life was the life that was always planned out, right, for everybody. You know, you graduate, you get a good job. Um, so that's what I did, right? Went to management consulting, worked in Lazada, um, did operations there. It was like a startup. But then I kind of realized that um, when working for corporate or other companies, there's a ceiling, yeah. right? So you can't go up. You can't climb up very quickly. You know, there's a, every year, there's a certain step that you can take, no matter how good you are. Yeah. And I felt very frustrated in that kind of system, right? So I felt like at one point... I wasn't giving 100% already. I only needed to give 51% mm -hmm. and I would get by, right? Yeah. And, um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like the motivation. I didn't, I didn't, I realized like the energy wasn't feeling so good. So I thought, okay, you know, why don't I do something where I can work hard and get paid for the work that I do? Mm -hmm. Right. So I, that's when I thought, okay, entrepreneurship. Yes. Right? Of yeah. course. The harder you work, the more you sell, the more you do, you reap all the rewards. Yes. Right? Um, well, of course, I'm sure you know you've seen all sorts of entrepreneurs. You work with a lot of entrepreneurs. You know it is tough. Yeah. It's, it looks really glamorous on the outside. Like, oh, cool, you're an entrepreneur. But uh, I think like 90% of entrepreneurs don't make it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I, th- I think so. I think easily. I, I recall there's a stats. I think it says 95% or 90% of startups fail in their first year. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I, I have seen those stats. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's crazy, right? So And the funny thing is like most people who initially become entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. they become entrepreneurs because they want to be free. They're like, it's all about freedom, you know? You screw a nine to five. Like, why tie yourself down to a nine to five when you can have all the freedom being an entrepreneur? And I think that's the... Dude, it's like the opposite of it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially the more you get into it, the more ambitious you become. Yeah. Because you become obsessed with the numbers because numbers is what measures your growth mm-hmm. and your success. Mm-hmm. And then you just keep chasing more and more. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend who became very, very successful as a content creator Mm. after she left her corporate job, Mm. right? And she left because she wanted to get out of that hamster wheel of like just working and working and aiming for that promotion. And, but she has always been a very ambitious person. Mm. Even through university, she would run for student council president and stuff like that. Mm. She's an ambitious person. Okay. So when she became an entrepreneur, mm. she rised up to the top very, very, very quickly. Mm. Yeah, she's actually a very, very famous like social media content creator that you may know also. Okay. Okay. I, I feel like I don't want to say her name because I don't want to name drop. Sure. Yeah, sure. but she's I'm... really, really successful. Okay. And then she got really stressed out. And at the peak of her entrepreneurial journey, mm. when she's invited to speak in events and stuff like mm. that, mm. she decided to take a sabbatical. Mm. Because she realized that she's working so hard, she dig out another new corporate for herself. That's right. And then like, what's the point of earning this lifestyle? She got to a point where she bought a house, she drove a Ferrari, eh, not Ferrari, a Porsche. Mm. She's really living the life. The Asian life. Yes, the Asian life. The house, the car, <laughs> the career. Yeah. Everything. Now yeah. she got there. Yeah. And she took a sabbatical without knowing if she's ever coming back. Mm. And yeah, I, I remember seeing a, a video about her coming back. She, she came back already after okay. a year. And she's sharing about all the experience and the learning she's done. Mm. And I mean, coming back to this is like entrepreneurship, it can be really, really tough. And it's all about the self-consciousness of knowing, wait, is this exactly what I want yeah. or what I'm looking for? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You, you were talking about how you realized that. No, I mean, it's true. Like, like yeah. Exactly what you said. I think... Um, no matter how much you perform, there's always a new goal. There's always a new target. And even like for your friend who's this like high performer, I'm sure the more content she created, oh, yeah. the more she felt like, okay, I, now I really got to be at the top of my game, right? Yeah. And it's, um, it's stressful. And um, I also had family issues. So I'm sure a lot of people have family issues, oh, yeah. family challenges. So I had a cousin who was like extra depressed and like it was very draining. Like have you, you yeah. have you dealt with, you know, dealing I, with I negative actually dealt people? with depression before. Oh, like people who are draining. Okay, I get draining, what you mean. We're draining people. Okay, people with very low energy to the point that when you interact with them, I mean, there's only that much that you can handle. Yes. Yeah. Correct. It comes to a point where it starts to eat your life out. Yes, yeah. I know, and it's like the type of people, you know, they just complain all the yeah. time. Like it's, it's just com- bad energy, right? Yes, mm-hmm. right? Um, so all of this made me very extra stressed. Okay. Right? And like, I couldn't take it. You know, so at one point, I couldn't take it. Um, you know the story of mm-hmm. like the big turnaround of actually my cousin, he hung himself. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's why um, I went into breath work mm-hmm. because nothing else could save me. Then I, I got drunk. Like oh my gosh, you have seen? I got oh. drunk a lot. I okay. would go out with my friends. I would drink. I would get drunk. I would try to forget all the pain, ah. um, and nothing worked. Right, and then I found Wim Hof. Mm-hmm. Right, so I found Wim Hof, and I got into breath work, and I realized, wow, just like like you've tried it, right? And you still have not experienced everything. You know, I've there not, is still I've not. so much to share with you. Okay, describe to the audience how it was for you the first time you experienced a breath work. Like, imagine just feeling great again. Like for a for a very long time. 
I felt like shit, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, after my cousin hung himself, I was anxious. I was, like, down. I was depressed. I couldn't go out. I had, like, no energy, no mood, no motivation to do anything. Okay. Right? And suddenly, in, like, just a short 10-minute session of conscious breathing, just conscious, deep breathing, where we let our stresses go, we let our shit go, we just let everything go, mm-hmm. right? And just by doing that for 10 minutes, this, this wave of like calmness and just peaceful relaxation just fell upon me. Oof. That I was like, oh my God, right? This is, how is this possible? <laughs> Dude, I was like, I'm like, I'm like how, how old was I then when I first learned this? I was about 30. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And I was like, dude, how, how is this possible? Breathing? Like, it's not even any drugs. It's not even a new technology or a new machine or yeah. anything. No. It's just... Just breathing. Just breathing. Just breathing, dude. It is crazy. And like, the more um, I got into it, the more you read up upon it and like the signs that's coming up and how it helps with anxiety, with depression, with your nervous system, with all of that, you're like... It is just breathing, <laughs> right? But it makes so much sense, which is why, like, they always say it's like, you know, the basic things you do, or it's always the simplest things that you do that makes, like, the biggest difference. Yes. You know? Yeah. Like, even in, like, the things that you eat, the things that you drink, like, um, even a little habit that you have in the morning. Mm-hmm. Could make like the biggest difference. Oh yes, yeah. For me, that is meditation. Mm. So I've been meditating for two years now. Mm. Every morning, mm. um, go- there are good days and bad days. Not every day I meditate well and it changes my life or mm. anything. Mm. It's a very subtle habit mm. where I just wake up and sit down to spend time just being self-aware about what's on my mind mm. and how I feel on that day. Mm. So I just check in with myself every single morning. Mm. Um, and eventually, the more I read up about it, I've learned new stuff to think to work towards manifestation. Mm. Um, I mean, that's like a slow practice that I'm doing and mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm seeing things happening. Yeah, like I'm in this podcast having a guest over mm. on my couch and all that. It's part of the life that I dreamed of. Mm. Right um, But going back to the habit So it's just a very simple thing to do Yeah I just wake up and close my eyes And sit down and breathe So easy No but so why Like okay So meditation is not an easy um, thing to do Right to a lot of people <laughs> Meditation seems like Like an impossible task Yeah To do mm-hmm. Right So I guess my first question I'm curious is Why, why did you actually get into meditation? Good question. Okay, I think I got into... I, I've always been very interested in self-improvement and self-help stuff. Mm. And every time you consume content about like successful entrepreneurs and stuff, like there's it always comes down to like meditation and stuff. Like I mean, this topic came up a lot, mm. right? Um, and journaling as well. So I actually started off with journaling first. Mm. I tried to like do that um, three-pager thing where you just write mm. for three pages mm. long. Mm. Every morning. Mm. That's why I think it's four pages maybe. Mm. But I think I managed to do three pages only. Mm. Um, And I was doing it for quite a bit. But I realized that it's very time consuming. Mm. And honestly, I haven't been writing in a long time in my life. So my arm always hurts after writing. Um, And I think most importantly, it's like the time consuming part. And somehow I felt like I don't flow well when I write. Um, So that habit stopped like after for a couple months maybe. Mm. Um, But... Um, I, I don't know exactly how I finally started with meditation mm. But I guess I tried a couple times um, I, My first introduction to meditation would be the Silva Method video mm. By Vishen Lakiani mm. on mm. Mind Valley mm. I think I was just thinking of go- going into meditation And I searched on YouTube and that's what came up yep. So that's my first introduction to it And I think that's in a way my first introduction to breath work Mm. I mean, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's somewhat related That's because right. it's my first time being conscious about my breath mm-hmm. and through just managing my breath and focusing on my breath, being self-aware with my entire body, mm. like body scanning and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've done some yoga classes as well that got into this whole, like that I guess touches on the topic of breath. 
mm. and just self awareness, even with like your body, mm-hmm. like you just being you just being aware about the movement of your body mm-hmm. and how it feels, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I had all this introduction mm. um, into that, and I think two years ago, no, three years ago, mm. I read Atomic Habits, mm. so I know the the basis of how to make a habit stick. Mm. But when you read a content, or you, when you read a book, when you listen to a podcast, sometimes you don't immediately apply mm-hmm. what you learn. Mm-hmm. So those knowledge was just laying around in my head yep. and I just went by. Yep. Just like yep. most of the self-help content that we consume. That most people consume, I yeah. think. Yeah. You know. Um, but I think two years ago, I just decided like, hey, I feel like introducing this new habits to my life and see if it actually changes anything. Mm. So I think I just started by wanting to do it daily for a month. Okay. Then I feel good about it. Yeah. Then I'm also kind of like a top achiever, right? So I like to see every day my app has that strict thing. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, I'm like a 10 day streak of meditating now. Let's go for 20. Let's go for 30. <laughs> and then on the day that like maybe I'm a little bit hungover and I couldn't wake up to meditate, I'll be like, oh, I broke my streak. Oh. Okay, let's go again. Oh. <laughs> I mean, at first it was like kind of like a game. Yep. I do it just to challenge myself. And yep. then yep. I think half year in or one year in, I kind of see the benefit to it. Okay. Yeah, I think I start realizing that, hey, actually, I think I do feel a change in how I manage my day to day life. Mm. Yeah, it, it's very subtle. Yeah. You don't, I think you don't wake up one day and feel like, oh, like my life changed. Yep. But it's halfway through it, I was like, hey, I think things are getting better. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's interesting. I am curious because it's like, again, I don't think it's an easy um, habit to do. Mm-hmm. But for you to do it, it for like two years now, mm-hmm. I think that's really good. And it's saying something, right? So yeah. I'm always keen to hear like how, how and why people would carry out a habit. Mm. Right, and I guess you you answered that last. So, what, what was actually like that biggest that big benefit that you saw from meditation? That um, I think I'm I'm a person who really believes in goals and having a direction on where you want to go. Mm-hmm. But I realized that when it comes to actually achieving these goals, you gotta be self aware and to be reminded of your goal every single day to actually move towards it. Mm. Right? So to actually like take the time to actually focus on your goals yes. every day. So right? And it's also just checking in with how I feel. I think I've learned a lot with acceptance and healing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So those are the things that like I guess I can pinpoint how meditation has changed my life. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think when you are able to accept how you feel, yes. you accept your thoughts like on this where you know, meditation, you always think that you just need to sit still, mm. but not really. No. It's about sitting still and having those thoughts in your head and still be comfortable with it. That's right. Yeah, so That's you right. don't really get rid of your fear or your pain mm. when you meditate. Mm. It's more like you learn to live with it and become friends with it. Mm. Okay, yeah. that's an interesting take. Mm-hmm. That's a very, very interesting take on it. Yeah. I've always seen it as just being present, basically. Yes, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. just just being like here in the right here, the right now, where most people can't be. Because most people are either living somewhere in the past or somewhere in the future. Yes. Right? And that's where like most problems come. Yeah. I, I don't know if you heard about this or you've seen this image or chart before. That's it. It's like an arrow. Mm. Um, so it shows from the present Which is right now mm. If you move the arrow to the past mm-hmm. Where you focus on the past mm. It leads to depression mm. Where if you focus a lot to the future mm. It leads to anxiety mm. Yeah. So grounding yourself back to the present It's always a good way to just Not be anxious or depressed That's right yeah. That's right, That's right. Mm-hmm. So that's the cool thing about breath work yeah. Every time you breathe You focus on this one single thing That you're present on yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right. So, super, super, it, it, but super cool. Thank you for sharing uh, why you're so into. So what? Why? Why do this podcast? Then? 
Oh, why this podcast? That's an interesting... Why, why are you interviewing me now suddenly? I don't know, right? <laughs> it's easy. It seems like it's easier this way to have like this. Okay, let's see how can I flow this back to you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, why? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I think you guys are here for the conversations yeah. anyways. So actually yeah. right before we started recording just now, I was telling P that this podcast is not so much an educational platform, mm-hmm. but it's more so... For my listeners to come in and listen and feel like, hey, you're talking about topics that I care about, Mm -hmm. but it's more about your opinions about things and your experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, Because ultimately, I can tell you the benefits of breath work or meditation or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's through experiences and stories that we really learn Mm -hmm. and we feel less alone in our adulthood journey. That's right. Yeah, so I don't want to create a podcast of telling you how to do one, two, three. Yeah. Of course, sometimes I would still share tips through my own experiences. But half of the time, I, I want to have guests over to hear about your experiences and mm. we talk about it. Mm. So that's kind of like why I do this podcast. Mm. Um, I mean, on top Safe. of it, um, this podcast is positioned under like the self-improvement um, like genre. Category? Uh, yeah, also? category. Okay. Right, right. Um, because... I am a self-help junkie myself. Mm. Like I do consume a lot of content mm. um, and I, I want to share about the things I learned mm. and also the things that maybe I've tried and doesn't work out. Mm. All like the stupid mistakes I've done. I think when it comes to the adulting journey, it's it can be very lonely. Yeah. It can be because all this while when you're growing up, yeah. there's a very clear step on what to do next. After your kindy, you go to primary school. Yep. After primary school, you go to secondary school. After that, you go to college and then you go to university. Yep. And then you get a job. Yep. I mean, that's what we were expected to do. Yep. So, But the thing is, after you graduate from university, suddenly they just throw you out in the wild and say, okay, now go live yourself. <laughs> yep. And then what, right? And then what? <laughs> Wait. So, so this podcast is to talk about these things okay. because... Somehow we were all just thrown into the wild, the wilderness to figure it out. Yep. And But we, we should be talking about it. Because yep. sometimes it feels like the adulting journey is like there are a lot of things that you feel like you're supposed to know. Yeah. So you don't really talk about it because you're embarrassed that you actually don't know it. Mm. Bro, like who, how would I have known how to apply for EPF or like mm. how to file for my tax mm. if nobody had taught me that? Nope. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I want to hop on to just create a space to help you realize it's we're all in this together. Yes. Oh, that's perfect. That's so nice. That's such a great um reason to have this podcast and I feel like I only wish I had a podcast like this to listen to kind of like growing going through life, la, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, when, because, when I have this podcast, mm. right, um, the target audience that I have in mind is like 25 to 35 mm. um, because I feel like that's the stage of adulthood where mm. I'm in. Mm. But I'm quite surprised to find that there are a lot of people in their 20s mm. that find them to be wow. Mm. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. They are learning a lot from mm. it. Mm. And uh, it's very mm. sweet for me. It's like, oh, all these little titi memes. <laughs> you know, they're coming to me and telling me they like their content. And I was oh, like, oh, nice. okay. So, so you're actually interested to listen to like people who are slightly older and has experienced it before. Of course. Of yeah. Course. yeah. Who's real as well. And I think that's what, that's what um, I mean, if I can say, mm. what, what I love about you mm. and why like I've always agreed to hang out with you and oh. chill out with you because you're just a really cool real genuine person and I think anyone who meets you can feel that um, so yeah just start just, just start share that you know um, so little sweet. thing so <laughs> sweet you make me um, speechless <laughs> yeah so, so I would say your audience are really lucky whoever's listening right now to, to this um, because yeah you will never meet somebody as bright warm and genuine as, <laughs> as Wendy I would say that's so funny. Yeah. Okay. Mm, we were talking about how you got into breath work, mm. right? Mm. And I mean, I was telling them about how you were in corporate mm. and then you got into breath work. Mm. And I'm quite curious to hear because, I mean, you've been through like that whole entrepreneurship thing mm. of like being very busy, very stressed, mm. very ambitious and mm. all that. Mm. And now you are still an entrepreneur, mm. but you are... You also 
have all these benefits that comes with breath work, right? Like mm. in a way that you have become a very chill and very content person. Mm. I'm quite curious to hear, like, how's your experience now being an entrepreneur? Mm. Because you still have targets. Mm -hmm. And how do you see the way you approach it to be different now? Mm. So I would say the definition of success is different now. Um, and that was one of the biggest breakthroughs I had over this past few years of like really like personal of growing, right? Because I think for a long time success was defined in a very in a very Asian way, la, Okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, you need to have a lot of money, you need to have a, like a nice house, a nice car, a big family, and um, and I think after like what happened to like to me, my cousin, my family, and everything. I managed to relook at what success actually means, mm -hmm. right? And to me now, success actually means growing um, every day, right? So as long as I'm growing, as it doesn't matter how little, how much, just one percent, point one percent. As long as I'm growing, then I'm successful, mm -hmm. because um, you know if you're not growing you're dying right that's the saying if you're not growing you're dying and it just feels like okay as long as you're learning something new every day is a new day mm -hmm. right you get to learn something new try something new do something new do something different right so that's my that became my new definition for success mm -hmm. every time I can learn something I am successful right every time I can help somebody I am successful and this made the entrepreneur journey more enjoyable mm. because now I feel successful every day. Oh, right? Actually, yeah. Because before this, like, I would think like, oh my God, you know, I, I would stress about sales. I would stress about marketing. I would stress about a lot of different things like targets and stuff because I felt like that's what would that's the definition of success, yeah. right? A successful company is a very rich company. Mm -hmm. But then now I don't need to chase all of this, mm. these things. Like, of course, I still have targets. I still have goals. I still have a life that I want to live, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But priority has become just learning, growing, and loving, you know? Just really loving. Mm -hmm. So I have this saying, yeah. breathe, Grow, love. Oh, Just three words. Just three simple words. And if you can do these three things every day, I promise you, you will never have a bad day. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Elaborate with me more. Okay. So breathe, grow, love. Three very, very simple things. Right? Um, what many people take for granted and are not doing consciously every day. So one breathing, so we've already talked about breathing, right? Breathing deals with your nervous system. It deals with your emotions. I mean, just think about any situation that you get into. The, one of the very first reactions that you get is you get a change in your breath, right? So when you learn to breathe consciously, you learn to feel consciously however you want to be more relaxed, to be happier, so whatever, right? So that's the breathing aspect. We've talked about it. Grow every day, right? So a lot of people come to me, they say, oh my God, I'm so bored, you know? Every day I'm so bored, there's nothing to do. But if you think about it, right? Like, if you were growing every day, mm -hmm. if you were learning something every day, like even as simple as like taking, take, you know, pie, you know, pie? Like, the, the three point one four one two, the long number. Oh, okay. Pi. Uh huh. So I'm bringing it up because like a lot of people call me in the UK. Oh. People used to call me Pi, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, your name is P P I C H I P P I Pi. That's okay. right, right. Okay, tell me more about Pi. So Pi. Right? So <laughs> so imagine if every day all you did was you remembered one number in the number Pi. Because oh. it's like 3.14, yes. right? Yeah. So if every day you challenge yourself to re just remember one new number, okay. every day will be an interesting day. <laughs> because every day is a new challenge. <laughs> so you suddenly have 
like and and in like I don't know how many years you're like this world record holder of the person who can like remember this whole pie, and of course it's a stupid example. Yes, okay, you, nobody would want to remember pie, but what if you did that with say cooking, podcasting, mm-hmm. content creation, breathing, personal development, right? Playing the guitar, playing piano, singing. Growing. In growing in any subject that you love that would just light you up, mm. right? Because sometimes work can feel very dull, right? You're not doing something interesting or you don't, you're not doing something you really enjoy. And that's also okay, mm. right? Because you're working to get money, to support your lifestyle, to do what you want to do, right? But on the side, learn something you love, right? Instead of just wasting time watching TV, Right, I used to, oh my god, I used to binge on Korean drama. Oh, I, I, I don't binge anymore. Okay, okay, that's a good thing. But I get what you mean. 15, 16 hours. Okay, <laughs> every time I go through one whole season of Korean drama, I like with with tears and whatnot. Right, yeah. like okay, it's good lah, it's good, right? It's good. But still, like dude, you wasted your time. Twenty. I feel like oh my god, I could have done like six. I could have, I could have done so much with sixteen <laughs> hours. Right. Yeah. Uh, but that's the growth as- aspect. Mm-hmm. So if every day you're growing, then life will never be boring. Yeah. Right? And then the last one is love. So when I talk about love, I see it from three aspects. Right? One is loving yourself. Because actually that's the most important. Right? Because when you can really truly learn to love yourself, that's when you learn to love everything around you, other people and stuff like that, right? So that's where it starts, loving yourself. That's one. Then two is to love um, the people around you, right? If you're ever having a bad day, right, just go do something nice for somebody. Just be kind to somebody. Just be like really, really unconditionally kind to somebody, and see what that does for you. Right? And that's why like parenthood, I feel like parenthood is like this great shortcut to um, to love. Okay. Why? Because they need to take care of their baby. Mm-hmm. Right? They need to love um, the baby. Yeah. Right? Or else the baby dies. Yeah. And so um, and so that's why they feel so good. They feel so fulfilled every day. Yeah. Because they're actually just loving. Yeah. Right? Loving yeah. others. Mm-hmm. And the last thing, the third part is to love like everything that you're doing. Love everything that you're doing. Love everything around you. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like pe- a lot of people, they get lost with things that they don't have, with the problems in their life. Um, and they don't take the time. So it's, it's really cool. I've done this exercise with quite a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll ask them, so what are the problems that you have in your life? Right? Mm-hmm. And they are able to list me a lot of problems. They're able to like, oh, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is like a machine gun, you know, like pop, 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 pop. Oh, okay. okay. And then like, I'll be like, okay, so what are you grateful for in your life? Or what are you blessed with in your life? Mm-hmm. I swear, right? Most people, they will stop They'll take a good while to think about it before they can give me an answer. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and it's because, like, it's just because the way the brain works, right? So the brain is built to help you survive, not to help you be happy. Yes. Yes. Our right. brain is a very primitive brain. That's right. It's to take to protect you from danger just to survive. That's right. It's not a brain that is designed for growth in a way. That's right. Yeah. It's not built for happiness. Okay, it's not built for happiness. Yeah. That's a better... Dis- yeah. yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So it only thinks about dangerous things. It mm-hmm. only thinks about problems. Mm-hmm. And most people always think about worst case scenarios. That is true. Yeah. People are always thinking about worst case scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know what they say a good day is? A good day is a day without problems. Ah, so no, 
Is it? Yeah. Well, for <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> you ask a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what is a good day? A day, a good day is a day without problems. But they can never describe what good actually could be. What mm. loving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're just focusing on the negative, and what is good if is if there is no negative. Yeah. And that's that's the problem I see like a lot of people having, mm. right? So that's why they hate their job, they hate their life, they they have anxiety, they have depression, they have illnesses, they have all sorts of problems. Mm. But again, when they can stop, yeah, take the time to just appreciate what they have, yeah, to love what's in front of them, to love the people in front of them, to love their job, and to just find. Some way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To just feel grateful, mm-hmm. to appreciate. Mm-hmm. Again, the wonders this would do for their life is crazy. So, again, three things. Yeah. Very simple. Three things. You breathe, you just take a deep breath, you grow, and then you love. Wow. Yeah. You know, you know those three words, right? It looks mm-hmm. like those posters that you would see in like Patricia's house yep. um, at the entrance. It sounds so cliche and cheesy. <laughs> I got to say that. <laughs> but it's so true. Yeah. It's so cliche, but it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is true. Yeah. Yeah. And like just by listening to you describe it, right? I think what's interesting is I was reflecting on my own life. Okay. And I think I'm doing all three things. And that's why I feel so happy in my life right now. Yeah. I think just a few episodes ago on mm. my podcast, I actually shared about... Entering your rich girl era. That's how I feel right now in my okay. life. Yeah. And I think I share the same values with you in terms of like, how do, you, how do I view success right now? Mm. And I, I think all entrepreneurs falls into that hole of like striving for numbers. And I think numbers are important. Mm. But I think when I learn to be grateful every day, mm. I think, okay, let's go into the three words, right? I've learned to breathe every day. Yeah. Which is when I meditate in the morning, I'm aware of my breath, right? Mm. And then I focus on growth. Mm. So I'm in a stage in my life where I'm just measuring my success on whether I'm putting out a good quality content Mm. on my platform online. Mm -hmm. And recently, Kevin and I picked up bouldering. Like, bro, I'm really into it right now. (laughs) I see. Yeah. The last time we met, I told you I'm trying it the next day. Yeah. But I think I've climbed for like almost 10 times now. Ooh. I'm I'm really planning to buy a like proper climbing shoes now Ooh. instead of rentals. Climber, look at you. I've, no, okay. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, so I love it because I'm growing every time. Yep. And because I went bouldering last night mm. and I completed two routes that I thought I couldn't do it. Oh. And I felt so good because when I first went, the first time I went to that climbing place, mm. I couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, I hope one day I'll be able to do it. Yep. And when I did it yesterday, I was like, <gasps> I did it already. In, did it. in like a month's time. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew. Yep. And I've been focusing on just growth in my day-to-day life. And yep. I'm very happy about it. Right. It's, it's fulfilling, no? It's very fulfilling. Like you suddenly feel like, oh, wow, I can do it now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nice. And, and nice. love. I've been also trying to be conscious about loving Kevin, loving mm. my family. Mm. Like I always try to do it. Mm. Like we're not perfect humans. Nope. Um, but, but, but yeah, like I, I realized that I've been practicing these three things that you were saying. Mm. And that's why I feel so good in my life right now. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because again, you are one of the more bubbly, genuinely happy person <laughs> that I know. Like that I love spending time with. Like, I don't Aww. feel like you're, you know... I feel like you ooze out energy, if yeah. anything, you know, which is which is which makes sense. Oh, you know, just by listening to Piachai talk, you realize you can notice how much love he has, <laughs> and he's expressive about it too. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. I think you're the only guy friend who actually always tell me you love me. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and for context, guys, Piachai is married. I know his wife. Um, yeah. There's nothing between us, but he's very expressive. You see. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. I, I think we've had a pretty good conversation over here, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's also a good length. Mm-hmm. And one experience that I was hoping to get by having you here mm. on my episode is mm. to actually have uh, like a breathwork session mm. with my guest. Yeah. Okay. Is it is it possible? Because it's their first time meeting you. They've not been through your training. Yeah. 
Um, they might be driving, they might be walking in the park, mm-hmm. they might be doing their laundry right now. Mm-hmm. But are you able to guide them through like a breath book session? Um, <laughs> okay, so I won't know. I I may I I won't guide them through a full breath work session, but I will share with them one big, one of my favorite breathing techniques. Okay, that I feel, um, not a lot of people are still teaching or sharing this. Okay, okay, this breathing technique uh, will help you basically relax anytime, anywhere. Because I mean, let's face it, life is pretty damn stressful, right? Um, so if you are driving, just be careful, okay? Well, if you're driving, don't do too much of this because you might feel a little bit lightheaded. Oh, wow. So you, you might, might, might want to find a more comfortable space where you are just relaxed when you're doing this, okay? Um, for the rest of you, if you're feeling a little bit lightheaded, then again, just slow down, right? Um, but basically, I call it relaxation breathing or also known as the sigh of relief. And to do this is very simple. There are only three steps to it, okay? So step number one is you're going to breathe into your stomach, okay? And when you breathe into your stomach, you want to feel your stomach expanding. When you, again, when you breathe in, you want to feel your stomach going out. Step number two is you're going to take a deeper breath into the chest, all right? And step number three, with an ah sound, you're just going to... <sighs> let the breath go, right? And again, when you let it go, really allow yourself to let it go, right? Don't hold on to it. Don't force it in any way. Just deep breath in and <sighs> let it go. And when you, again, when you let it go, let it go with some sound. Sometimes the louder or the more sound you have, the better it feels, the more relaxing it feels, right? Mm -hmm. I won't go um, so deep into the science as to why, but just know that that's how it works, right? Just think of any stressful moment you've had. Once that stressful moment finished, what was the first thing you did? (sighs) That's right, right? (laughs) And the louder, the better. It's not just a... (sighs) Like, yeah. it's, ah, oh, yes, oh my God, that was so stressful. It's not like, ah, that was so stressful, uh, right? Uh. So again, the louder, the better. And here's a second tip. Do it more than once. Mm. If you are really feeling stressed or if you're really having a bad day, if you're really having a tough time, do it five times, ten times. However many times you need to start feeling great again. Right, um, and if you really for you for those listeners who are, you know, high achievers, really want to push yourself and you want to really try it, do thirty of these deep breaths. Right, mm-hmm. find a nice comfortable spot, lie down or sit down. Take thirty of these deep breaths, just in and out, in and out, and then see how you feel. Right? I promise you, you're going to feel so much more relaxed, so much more clearer, and so much better. Wow. All right, so I hope this helps your, your audience. Yeah. I mean, I felt I'm feeling very relaxed right <laughs> now after just doing like two rounds of it with mm-hmm. you just now. Mm-hmm. And wow. I hope you guys actually feel that relaxation <laughs> over this conversation. I think... Um, yeah, I love talking to you. I always feel like whenever we speak, we talk about stuff that matters. Mm-hmm. And I think we really align in terms of values in our lives as well. So um, the things that we shared today are the things that I have always wanted to share with my audience. Mm. Yeah, because I think these are the things that has changed my life for the better. And these are the things that I wish for everyone um, that's listening right now. Um, so thank you so much for coming over, P. Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, I hope you feel cozy in my space. Um, and, you know, if you guys love what Piachai just shared, and if you guys want to follow more of his content, please follow him over on Instagram. I'll be sharing his handle on my description box and my show notes. Um, and you know what? If you love him, let me know in the comment section or request in a request form as well if you have more questions for Biachai. And maybe I can have him back on the channel again. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah, okay. Oh, nice. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye, Bye. guys.